because that must mean I don't like him because I don't want to be there. That's like a cult. I don't think it's the same thing. That's literally a cult. Yeah. After the interview Shane Dawson did with Nick Crompton, the former business manager of Team 10, it leaves us asking, is Team 10 a cult? What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about helping you to improve your mental health. And what I like to do is I like to take things from the YouTube community or pop culture and try to use that to teach you how to improve your mental health. And a big part of that is relationships with friends and other people and stuff. So if you're into that, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. I have been recapping all of the Shane Dawson episodes and and talking about different mental health subjects. But before I get started with this video and talking about the cult aspects and friendship and things like that, I do wanna give a shout out to Danielle right here. Check this out, she tagged me on Instagram. Me and her were actually matching today. We're both wearing the same Rewired Soul shirt. Um, I will provide a link to the shop or you can check the description. But yeah, my beautiful girlfriend, Tristan, she made a bunch of designs, so go check it out. Tag me on Instagram if you end up getting one or a coffee mug, there's also coffee mugs. All right, so anyways. The enemies of Jake Paul, um, Shane interviewed Nick Crompton, and I wanna focus on the part where Nick talks about how pretty much the way that Team 10 operates, they sever ties with anybody who leaves, and Jake might take it personally and all of that. Now, I, I just wanna touch on this. I, um, I <laughs> Shane, like, I don't know, it's, it's interesting to me with all the reviews and like people are saying like, oh, Shane like made, you know, episode two way too dramatic. Like, listen, listen, that's Shane. That's just what he is. And like, so I'm not gonna like harp on him. Like one of the pet peeves I have is like when people call things cults and I'll explain that towards the end of the video. But like, that's just what Shane did. Like Shane's like, oh, that sounds like a cult. This sounds like a cult. Like you're either with us or you're against us. When you leave, you disassociate. You don't talk to them. Like, but he blocked me, he wouldn't talk to me. Either. Is he, does he, did he cut communication from Tessa and all the other people that mm -hmm. left? I mean, that's like a cult. Like, it, like, the, the aspect of it sounds like the aspect of a cult, but it's not a freaking cult. Um, but more importantly, like, the topic I want to bring up with you is, like, these, these kind of severing ties relationships, because I, I can definitely relate to that, and I'm somebody who has trust issues, and I don't let people get in too close because I've been hurt like that. So when it comes to Jake Paul and Team 10, it, it's hard to say without knowing them um, why, why it is, like, why it is that they do that. Um, Jake... In his case, from what I've seen, it seems like an ego problem. It really does seem like an ego problem. But I think most of us, like me and you, we deal with this in a different way. And the best thing I can relate it to is like work, right? Um, one of my personal experiences that I had was at a job I had before the treatment center, the place I was working. I worked there for a while. It was the first job I had after getting uh, sober. And like, man, like I built like really strong relationships with the people there. I, I worked there for about a year and a half, almost two years, and we built really strong relationships. Like we hung out outside of work and we didn't just talk about work. Like, you know, they would invite me to holiday parties and like, you know, we would hang out and just all of that. And when I ended up um, leaving that company, I was like, I was shocked and hurt because so many people just would not talk to me. Like they wouldn't talk to me. And it, it hurt so, so, so much. And I'm like, okay, well, this is why I don't get close to people because I don't want to get hurt. And like, that's not healthy for us. You know what I mean? So what one of the things i want to say is you know especially looking at somebody like nick crompton and things like that if any of you deal with this in your life like with kind of like clicks or little groups or even if it's work like there's an old saying that when people show you who they are believe them that's really important so like i want you to evaluate the certain friendships that you have like like, don't think for one minute if you have somebody in your circle who's treating somebody else poorly and maybe it's cutting off a friendship or never talking to them again. Like, don't think that they won't do that to you in a heartbeat. Like, I made a video not long ago about L. Mills and terminal uniqueness. This is a great example, like, oh, it wouldn't happen to me. That would never happen to me. A great example is, 
a relationship. Let's say a relationship where you got with somebody and the way you started that relationship was them cheating on somebody else, right? And you're like, oh, well, they would never do that to me. And then later down the line, they cheat on you. Like, no, they showed you who they were believe them, all right? Um, I could do a million videos about trust issues. What I, what I would say is, is this, like my standard, my standard of people who are close to me is pretty high. It's pretty high. I'm a very sociable, charismatic, outgoing guy, but I have very few people who I keep close to me. Um, I would say the only time that this would affect you negatively and your mental health is if it's becoming isolative, if it's fueling your depression. But the best suggestion I have for you, like, is to take baby steps with trust. Like, let people in a little bit, have them earn your trust, let people in a little bit more, have them earn your trust and things like that. Because if we keep this wall up constantly, like, isolation, isolation is just the worst thing you can do for your depression. You have to have people who you can turn on, uh, not turn on, that'd be bad, turn to. And that can be through uh, Facebook groups, um, if you don't have people like in your area, or like look on meetup.com, whatever it is. Like I have a lot of friends who I've met through gaming, and like we're close, but we're not like super close, you know, but I have conversations with them a lot. But I think it's important to recognize like when this is happening to other people. And that's that's a good time for you to evaluate like is this a good friendship or relationship that I want to be in right now, right? So the other thing that Shane kind of brought up was like the rules, the rules of the house. But I, in my years on YouTube, have never seen a squad have a house, have rules. That was another thing, right? He had a bunch of rules or something that people were like, a lot of rules in the beginning but they they were encouraging people to be better it all feels very culty to me and he said yeah there's like rules that's kind of like cultish no it's not <laughs> like i would imagine like that's a smart move you have a bunch of young people moving into a house like you want rules so I did not go to treatment. I did not go to a drug and alcohol rehab center when I got sober. I went through a sober living home. Those of you who don't know what that is, it's a house. It can be owned by a company or by a person and it's where sober people live, people trying to stay clean and sober. And there were rules. <laughs> That's the way it was. There were rules, there were guidelines. It was to keep order in it. It was to make sure that people cleaned up after themselves and all sorts of stuff. So I'm not really surprised about rules, even though Nick kind of said, you know, that was just mainly for the beginning. Um, but yeah, like rules are there for a reason. And I know a lot of us like hate rules, but like if you're somebody like me, especially people like who are in recovery from addiction, like especially early recovery, like we're not very responsible people. Like I hate to tell you, but I tell my clients this all the time. Like we're not that responsible. We need rules, we need guidelines. Like I hated it. I hated having a, a daily chore. I hated having to make my bed. I hated having a curfew and all these other things. But like, left to my own devices in early recovery, I would have been a hot mess. I would have, I would have done all sorts of crazy things. Like, I might have gone out and relapsed. I would have hung out with the wrong people and all sorts of stuff. So, here's my little thing about cults, all right? And this video is gonna take a turn, but surprise, we're gonna talk 12-step recovery. So I have a whole playlist about like getting clean and addiction and 12-step programs. But um, you know, my relationship to 12-step programs has, has changed over the years. I'm not as active as I used to be for different reasons. Maybe I'll make some videos about that. But one of my main gripes is when people say, that 12 step programs are like a cult. I'm like, you are out of your mind. Like the reason why this is a pet peeve for me is because like, there's a few things I'm fascinated with, okay? One of them is serial killers. The other one is cults. Like there are some great documentaries. Like I don't know if any of you watched that documentary, Wild Wild Country on Netflix. That's a cult, all right? Um, there's also this great show on uh, Hulu called The Path. Or did any of you watch that one show with Kevin Bacon called The Following? And it was like, that was perfect for me because it was like serial killers combined with a cult. Very interesting stuff. So when people say like 12 step programs are like a cult, like they are out of their minds. Like, like when Shane was talking about this and like, oh, you know, it's kind of like a cult. Like cults like either sever ties with you or they try to like chase you down and get you to come back and stuff like that. Like if I miss 12 step meetings, like nobody comes looking for me. Like I'm on my own, you know, like, but I will, I will say this. And this is for any of you out there 
who are in recovery or you know somebody in recovery, I share this story, okay? Like, it's important to understand that every 12-step fellowship, every 12-step meeting is gonna be different. And I like using my platform to share about this. Like, I wanna educate people about this. A lot of people do not go to 12-step programs because of misconceptions and all sorts of stuff. So, um, every, every fellowship is different. And there was one fellowship I was going to which I loved. I loved it, it was every single Friday night. I absolutely loved it. No matter how my day was going in early recovery, I knew I can go to that meeting on a Friday and somebody was gonna say some stuff in there that just really lifted me up and gave me motivation, gave me inspiration. You know, like, it was amazing. I absolutely loved that group, but I wasn't like too involved with it. I just went to the meetings. Well, as I started to meet people and know people, like, they were, for lack of better words, and here's me being hypocritical, they were running their specific fellowship like a cult, right? In certain aspects, in certain aspects, they were running it like a cult. Um, just for example, I remember them just saying people were no longer welcome at the meetings and I just completely disagreed with that. I'm like, are you serious right now? Like, are you serious? Like, these are people who are fighting to stay alive and you are not welcoming them back to the meeting and it was for stupid, stupid stuff. Like one guy just did something um, that his sponsor told him not to do. And this is why I educate people in early recovery about 12-step programs. Sponsors are there to give you suggestions only. That's it. You know, like my sponsor, for example, back in the day, he gave me a ton of suggestions. Some of them I took, some of them I threw in the garbage, you know, but he didn't just like ban me from like a meeting, you know what I mean? But I tell this story because, okay, so here's a great example. Yesterday, I made a video about BetterHelp and this conspiracy that BetterHelp is a scam. Like, I'll always be honest with you guys. I'll always be honest. Like, I'll be honest that some 12-step meetings suck. So you know what I did? I was in a city with probably 100 meetings a week, so I just quit going to that meeting. That's it. Like, I was fighting to stay alive. I wasn't gonna let this one meeting take this thing that I had away from me. I wasn't gonna let one meeting lead me back out so I don't have a son anymore, so I don't have my life anymore, so I lose my family again. You know what I mean? Like, in early recovery, I get it too, because I used to be the type of person where I was just waiting. I was waiting for somebody to give me an excuse to just leave and never, ever, ever come back again. So I just want to let you know, so like, I know a lot of you who are new to my channel, you are not addicts or alcoholics in recovery, you know I do kind of a broader kind of uh, mental health discussion on my channel, but like, I think it's important to learn this stuff because addiction affects one out of every 12 people in the world, right? So if you know 12 people, you know an addict or an alcoholic. So now you have just a little bit of knowledge that you can keep in your pocket. So the addict or alcoholic in your life, when they're trying to say, oh, 12 cent meetings are like a right? And all that nonsense, you link them to this video or you have them shoot me an email and I'll drop some knowledge on them, all right? But let's do this down in the comments below. Like going back to the whole like severing ties, like, have you been a part of any group or um, or like an experience like mine with work where after you left, people just severed ties with you? Um, how did you overcome that? Are you still trying to heal from it? Let's have a conversation down below in the comments, all right? But that's all I got for you with this video. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're new, I'm always making videos to help you out with your mental health. So make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And a huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. And if you would like to get a shirt like me and Danielle, you can click or tap on that little shop icon right there, all right? Thanks for, so much for watching. Don't use the word cult too much, and I'll see you next time.